met Mary and Martha, and he commended Martha for what she did. She was the one to put up the tent. He said, Mary, now you have chosen something else, and that is to worship the king, but both of them are important. And I want to say thank you to this church family that you have not taken the easy way out. You can be inside in a comfortable place. A woman said to me one day about our mutual work, she said, well, Brother Johnny, it would be easier to, and I said, hold it right there. I've never chosen the easy way out. Thank you, church family, for putting up this tent to change things a little bit, Brother Randy, for outreach and ministry. And I commend you for that, and I thank God for it. Uh, Brother Capel and King Dochi, and so thank you for letting us come to be a part of this. I want you to take your Bible, and we're going to be looking at the book of Matthew, the book of Matthew chapter 11. Now during these days, we're going to be doing some studying about getting to God. Did you know that's what we need in our nation and in our world? And I want to read this passage of Scripture and I'll be dealing with it maybe on Wednesday night. Chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all you that labor in a heavy leg, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly of heart, and you'll find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy. My word is light. Now today is Father's Day. Uh, I've received some call. I called my dad. By the way, Judy and I renewed our vows. We've been married 50 years. Can you believe that? Amen. My dad, who is 93, performed at our ceremony 50 years ago. And last Saturday, Judy and I stood before my dad as he led us in renewing our vows 50 years later at the age of 93. Amen. Now, not me, but him. This is a special day. How many of you are dead? Raise your hand. Raise your hand, okay? I want to talk to you just a minute and make application of Scripture, but this is for all of us. I'm not telling you what somebody told me or what I read in the book. I'm telling you what I have observed in my 68 years of life. I have traveled a lot. I've been in a lot, lot of di different cultures. I've been in cultures where men treated the women like animals, literally. And Brother Randy, Cody, and Cowboy, that's the thing that broke my heart with that young Muslim girl with all I could see was her face. I knew that even after singing the name Jesus with her lips, she couldn't dare let them see that the man Jesus was on her lips. He could have been dead for her. But I knew that when that young lady left that place and went back to her home, she could be treated lower than an animal. I knew that. I've been in countries where women are not appreciated. And I think, in my observation, the thing that I see in our world today that is more needful than anything else is for fathers to stand up and be counted. It's for men that call themselves dead or someone else calls them dead for them to stand up and believe something and do something about it. Not in the way that other countries try to tell us is the way to do it, but in the way the Scripture says. I know that men are doing some things wrong. I've observed that. I just quoted to you a situation that I observed. I've seen that many times. I don't have to go to the Philippines or Guatemala or India or El Salvador. I don't have to go to Saudi Arabia to find where men don't treat women right. I find it right here in the United States of America. I find it here in Texas. And so I understand that men are doing some things that are wrong. I know that we're taking for granted the privilege of being a dad. I understand that. But in the midst of our failure, I realize that today I'm preaching to some men who are sitting here that though you have made a mistake, you'll be the first one to stand up here and say, I've messed up. I've done things that are wrong. I haven't been the kind of daddy I should be. I haven't been the kind of husband that I should be. But I know that 
there are men that are sitting here today that can say, but Brother Johnny, I've done my best. I messed up. I didn't do the times what I should have, but I've been willing to repent, and as best as I've known how, i tried to be the godly example that God wants me to be. And I want to say to you today, something can be done about your life if you want it to be. I have the privilege of uh, performing marriage ceremonies around our country, and I say to the young couples who stand before me, I know that you said this, I want to be in charge. I'm tired of mom and dad telling me what to do. I want to be the one to make decisions in my life. And you know what I say to those young couples? Guess what? You're in charge now, but you're going to give an account to God for everything that takes place in this household from this day forward. Yes, you are in charge. But because of that, you will give an account to God what takes place in your home. I want you to know that in, in the midst of your pain and your sorrow and your failure, something can be done about that. But you know that's left up to you. You. When Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor in the heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. The language that he was using, there's an understood subject that he looked at them and he said, Hey, I'm talking to you. You have to make this decision. Mom and dad can pray for you. Your wife can pray for you. Your children can pray for you. But no one can change the caliber dad you are but you. You're in charge of that. You're in charge of that. Nobody can walk up to you and say, hey, you're going to change. They may beat the daylights out of, out, out, of, out of you. My dad did that to me several times. But that's not what changed my life. That kept me out of a lot of problems. Do you know what changed my life? It's when... That man that we sing about so often, four or five times this morning, Jesus is the one that will make you the daddy that you're supposed to be. Amen. Now, the reason for it, Jesus said come to me is because he knows he's got the answer. I thank God for books. Five love like Judy and I do marriage retreats around the country and in other countries. And there are good reading materials where they can teach you how to be a better husband, how to be a better wife. A lot of good materials where you can read how to be a better dad or how to be a better son. But Jesus didn't say it. Go to the office with these good books. What Jesus said is this, Dad, if you want to be a better dad, you have to make up your mind to get to me. you got to come to me. Now you see, there's a reason why a lot of people like to read books. Do you know why? Somebody hold up a cell phone. Hold that cell phone up. Hold it up real loud. You know why people love that thing right there? Just put it down there. You see, no matter what's being said to you, if you don't want to listen to it, just bash off. You can say anything you want to to anybody, and when they start to give you a reply, just touch that little button that says mute. You don't hear a thing. You're in charge of it. Do you know why you don't like going to Jesus to find out information about being a daddy? Because you can't handle it that way. He's not going to hush when you tell him to. When you start asking the Lord, what am I supposed to do? What are my responsibilities? Who am I to my children? You'll get an answer from Him. And the reason why it's difficult for us to communicate with God is because it can't be one-sided. It can't be. Job thought he would try that a while. If you read the book of Job, you'll find that Job was telling God a bunch of stuff. I told a man the other day, Brother Randy, he was sitting in my house, and he was about uh, a yard and a half distance from me, and he made a statement. And I leaned forward, and I said to that man, look me in the eye. I said, I want you to know I'm not afraid of you, and I'm going to talk to you man to man sitting in my house last week I told the man that. I said to him, I'm going to tell you the same thing God said to Job. You want to talk to me man to man? He said, put your britches on, boy. You're not ready for this. And I said to that man, your wife may be afraid of you and other women are, but I want you to know I'm looking you out telling you you don't frighten me and I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm supposed to tell you. You know why I did that? I wanted him to know 
that when you start talking man to man, you're not the one in charge of the conversation. You're going to listen to them. You're not just going to talk, you're going to listen. And that's why sometimes we don't like to go before God. You see, we pray and we talk to God about a lot of things, but we don't like to Him to give us a reply. Every now and then, Judy talks to me. Not with her mouth. Now, she does that. But every now and then, Judy tells me I'm talking too much. Now, you can't believe that, can you, Brother Bill? You've never heard me talk too much. But we'll be sitting around a table, and all of a sudden, I'll just feel somebody touching me on my pants leg with their foot. You know what you can say it? You're talking too much again. You're talking too much again. You're talking too much again. I don't like that. And she says, my reply is, I'll say across it, instead of me just getting quiet, I talk more, I look across the table and say, am I talking too much? Well, that proves I'm not listening. What I'm going to do is just hush. But that's hard for me to do. But you know why? We find it difficult to communicate with God. He can do a whole lot more and touch you under the table on your leg until you to quiet down. You see, that's why Jesus said, come to me. That's not because He's unfeeling. It isn't because He doesn't care. It, doesn't, it isn't because He doesn't know our infirmities. The Bible says He knows everything about us. The Word of God says He knows our down-sitting and our uprising. He knows every aspect of our life. The reason why Jesus said, come to me, is because He has the answer to the dilemma of your life right now. You see, we men sometimes have trouble with listening to what other people tell us. Because to do, we like to be in charge. We like for people to sit back and pay attention to what we have to say. And we understand that sometimes we need instructions from the key. That's why Jesus said come to me. It isn't because He's unfeeling about your pain. He knows about your pain. He knows what it is to have a wake child. There's some of you daddies sitting here today. Yes, you've messed up. Yes, you've done things that are wrong. But you've tried to make application of right principles in life. And your children have not listened to you. They haven't done what you told them to do. And they have suffered the consequences of not listening and not heeding to advice. God knows about that. He understands the struggle that you're going in right now where you're doubting yourself, where you're saying, well, should I have said that to them? Did I say the right thing? Did I, did I say it like I should have said it? He understands that. And the reason Jesus said, come to me, all, is because He knew the struggle that all of us have. Have you ever seen such a, such a display of trouble in our land today? Uh, somebody called us at home. We've been gone since Friday morning. And they left a message on our phone and it said, what's going on in Central? That's where we're from. Y'all are in the national news. Did y'all hear that? Anybody hear that? I can't find anybody that did. One of our police officers was interviewed and it's, it's in national news. I don't know what happened. But I want to tell you something. In your life today, God knows what you're dealing with. He knows exactly what you're struggling with. The failures that you believe that caused your children to turn out like they have, He's not through with them. You may give up on them. He hasn't. He didn't give up on you. I said to somebody the other day, I was making reference to Johnny. If God can use this man, God can use anybody. If you doubt the capacity of holy God, when you get home, you look in the mirror and you just remember, if God can change that individual, God can change anybody. So don't you give up on your children. Mother and dad, listen to me. This is not just for dads. It's for moms and dads. Those things that you have taught those children that they didn't listen to, that you believe with all of your heart, it didn't do any good. I want to tell you something. When the Bible says, if you'll train up a child in the way that he should go, when he's old, he'll not depart from it. God didn't get somebody else to tell him that truth. He created that truth. And it's real. He said, if you'll do it my ways, I want to tell you what's going to happen when they're old, they'll not depart from you. You can have confidence in it. And so the reason Jesus said, come to me, is because He knew these. Listen. He's got all the answers. 
Now you can't get all, all of them at one time. Judy was doing some counseling with a couple recently, and they decided, well, we want our lives to be what they ought to be. He wants to love her like he should. She wants to love him like she should. And Judy said to them, you feel real good now. You feel real excited. You're starting all over. But you cannot correct something overnight that has taken 20 years to get like this. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. And so you can't go to God and all of a sudden just say, God, I'm going to give you my life and everything be eradicated and all of your problems be gone. It's not that way. Can you get saved just like that? Absolutely. Can you turn your life over to Jesus just like that? Absolutely. Can your direction change from headed into destruction to headed in everlasting life? Can it change just like that? Absolutely. Because you have encountered some things in your life you may have to bow down over and over and over again to see God bring correction to some of the things in your life. But it's worth it. The reason Jesus said, come to me, is because He knows. Nobody else has all the answers. No one does. He knows that it doesn't matter what your source is, it's not enough. He knows that you can go to anybody that you please or any administration and being a father or a, a wife or a dad or a mom or whomever the case may be, He knows that they can pour into you the volumes of everything they know and it's still not enough. Still not enough. And so the reason Jesus said come to me is because, first of all, He's got all the answers. And guess what? He doesn't have a problem giving you the answer. Just like he said to Job that day, when Job said, Well, Lord, you don't you don't understand. I've got three friends here that have been attacking me and accusing me. You don't understand. And that's what God said to Job, son. Yes, I do. I understand quite well. I'm in charge of this. I know what they said to you. And I not only do I know what they said to you and what you said to them, I know what I'm going to say to them. I got the last say so. That's the beauty of coming to Jesus. You see, we find ourselves in error. We find ourselves with flaws all over. We make mistake after mistake after mistake. That's why Jesus said, come to me. First of all, because He's got all the answers. And He has an, an unlimited capacity of giving you the answer. The second reason is, not only does He tell you to come to Him because He's got all the answers, He tells you to come to Him because He cares. He cares. What a, what a privilege to have friends that care. I thank God that God has raised up people in our life that love us and they care. I thank God that there are people who pray for us all the time. I am blessed by that. I thank God that there are people who minister to us in numerous ways. What a blessing. But we've got needs that some people don't know about. So they can't meet the need. But He does. When Jesus said, come to me, He knew. He knew about every pain that I'm struggling with now. Judy and I had a marriage retreat down on the Gulf Coast in uh, Gulfport, Mississippi some years ago. And I asked the question, like we did when we had your marriage retreat, I said to them, why is it that I always have to have the floor, that I'm louder than you, my story is bigger than yours, and I have to enlarge in everything that you say, I've got to come up with something bigger. And there was a man there in that marriage retreat, and he started to speak. But then he realized, if he gave the appropriate answer, that he knew that he knew, it might hurt my feelings. And so he said, and then he stopped. And I looked at him and I said, Tony, I know that you know the answer. Because the reason you stopped, you thought you was going to hurt my feelings. But you tell this group what you were going to say. Why do I always have to have the floor? Why do I have to speak louder than the next one? Why does my story have to be stronger or bigger or more lasting or more effective? And he said, low self-esteem. And I said, you nailed it on the head. I said, brother, you, you nailed it. That's me. Low self-esteem. People say, well, I never would have guessed that with you, Brother Johnny. But God knows that. God knows that. God knows 
how limited I feel about myself. Even though I've preached 14,000 times in my life. That's a lot of preaching, isn't it? You know what I said 14,000 times, Brother Molly? As old as you are, that's a lot of preaching, you hear me? You think after 14,000 times, 31 countries all over the world that I know and have an effective way to preach today. But I said to a young man the other day when he called and talked to me for an hour that he felt like God was calling him to preach. I said to him, Austin, though I have preached 14,000 times, and to preach one time. Though my credentials say I ought to be able to preach, I don't have anything to say unless when I stand, God impregnates my heart and my mind and my mouth with biblical truth. I have nothing to say. I have, do I have low self-esteem? Absolutely. But God knows that. God knows that. It's not a big deal. It isn't a big deal at all. That's why I can stand to preach to 4,000 pastors in the Philippines. And it doesn't bother me one bit. That's why I can stand and preach in front of anybody. It doesn't bother me. Because God knows my limitation. You know why Jesus said come to me? First of all, because He knew He had the answer. But secondly, because He knows our infirmity. He knows where we hurt. He knows about the physical struggles the emotional struggles. He knows about everything we face. Dad, I know the opinion you have about yourself. And I know the opinion you have about yourself is partly formulated because of the opinion your wife has about you. And I know the opinion you have about yourself is partly formulated because of the opinion your wife and your children have about you. And I know the opinion you have about yourself is partly the responsibility of what your wife has said and your children have said and her mom and dad. That's a meeting right there, you hear me? I know that. Let me tell you something. God does too. God does too. Everything that the enemy would say to you or everything that people that love you might say to you. A compilation of every bit of it. It's of no consequence when you go to Jesus. Because He knows your infirmity. He knows your infirmity. Now listen to this part. Come unto me. How many? Oh, Red Mike said all. Oh, you've been around these people that want you to think like they got made. Have you ever been around these super spiritual people that they act like, hey, if you can get as close to God as I am? <laughs> yeah. You know what I want to do to them? Not too Christian. I got to be honest, not too Christian. I get around people all the time. They want to convince me how close to God they are and how many steps it is to spiritual maturity. Pooey. That's what I say. Y'all know what pooey means in Texas? <laughs> My Jesus said, come to me. Because he recognizes that that individual who always has the answers is in just as big a uh, struggle as you are. That's why he said all. Come to me all. You, that labor and heavy labor. You see, no, nobody's got a corner on God. Nobody's got God locked up and God's going to do things like they think He should do them. That's everybody that's alive. Jesus said, every one of you need to come to me. I thank God for that. I'm glad that the Christian walk is not an exclusive walk where certain people have a certain corner on God and nobody else can walk with it. Oh, Jesus said, come to me all of you that labor and heavy labor. And then you know what He said you can do as a result of it? He said, I'll give you money. That's what the TV preacher did. That's what they say. Oh, y'all come follow us. I heard a preacher say one day he was wanting $66 million to buy another jet. Yeah. He stepped off the plane and I heard him say, the blessings have arrived. I wanted to say, get back that plane, go where you came from. Anybody's got that kind of opinion, ain't got nothing to tell me about God. You know what Jesus said, coming in the audience that labor in the heavy labor, and I'll give you money. That's what the TV personalities promise you. That's what these people that propagate a gospel that if you'll give, God's obligated to give you a new Cadillac and to give you this and give you all that stuff. That's not biblical. Well, God bless you if you give, of course. 
But you don't give to God so God can give you a bunch of stuff. You give to Him because you love Him and He said do it. But you know what He said? Come to me all you that labor and heavy laden and I will give you authority. I'll tell you if your wife won't listen to you. Let me tell you how to get her to mind you. From now on, if you'll come to me, you can say jump and she'll say how high. From now on, if you'll come to me, I can tell you how to raise each of you. So come to me all you that labor the heavy laden, and I will give you ribs. Come on, give me one of the chairs right there, please. Thank you, sir. Now, I know I'm 68. I know I don't act like a good chair, but I am. Sometimes I, sometimes I get tired. Sometimes I preach. And I love people. I love being around people. I mean, I do. I can be around people all the time. I can never get tired of being around people. But every now and then I get to the end of my way. You know what I got to do? Look here. When I get home, <coughs> you know what I do? Watch you watch this. This, boy, I'll tell you, this is this spiritual. I'm teaching y'all something big down here. Glenn, what are you laughing at me for? I'll tell you the truth. Watch it. When I get home, you know what I want to do. Some of you here today, that's what you need. Never have found spiritual rest. You're always anxious. You're always uptight. You're always filled with anxiety. You never have peace. I mean, God can bless you if you're still upset. God can move through your life if you're still upset. God can use you. You still don't know how to handle it. You know what you need? Watch here. You need to come from that long journey of struggling and striving and trying to prove stuff and trying to do things your way. You need to you, you need to do this. This is what Jesus said I'm gonna give you. Watch this. He said if you'll come to me, I'll give you rest. Keep by that. Take all the money you want to do. Can't buy this. Can't work for this. Some of the most miserable people I've ever met in my life work for God more hours than most people do. And there's no peace and no rest. They're discontented every day, all day long. Never found rest. It's available to anybody. Y'all didn't know this, but 15 years ago, I found out I had heart failure. My heart had been pumping at 18% for 15 years. And sometimes I get at the end of my way. Sometimes I come in, I, I do some mission work in Canada, but I can't use my CPAP machine. I got one in things you hook on your nose and you breathe, and it takes you to breathe. It pushes air in your mouth. Sometimes I get, when I was in Canada and I ministered, we've been eight days paddling 65 miles in portage, they call it. I call it carrying snow, but they call it portage. It's pretty late to late. They asked me, they said, Brother Johnny, could you preach for us in the morning? And I said, yes. And I got back to the home of the man I stayed with. And I said, Wes, I don't think I can preach in the morning. I don't believe I have the energy. I could not literally. I could hardly put one foot in front of the other. And I went to bed that night. Now you listen. I was so tired little, I couldn't put one foot in front of the other. I went to bed that night. I had about 50 miles to drive the next day to Port Francis, to Port uh, Francis to preach. Listen, the next morning, I felt so good, I got halfway to the church. I pulled the car over beside the road. I got out on my knees and lifted my hands and I said, God, there is no way I can feel like this. I just want to thank you. Listen, you know what he gave me? He gave me rest. Man. Rest. He 
gain by that? I take a handful of pills twice a day, but he can't do that. I was amazed, Donna. I got up the next morning as though I'd never been sick a day in my life. Cancer or whatever you face, we have to have ribs. That's why Jesus said, if you'll come to me, if you'll come to me, I'll give you ribs. Anybody here that needs that? Aren't you tired of struggling and being frustrated all the time and fretting and always man, giving it to those people? You know, you say, that you know how they are. They kind of, <laughs> you've been around people like that. Yeah, right. somebody who said, oh yeah, right. Be careful now, be careful. You've been around people like that. <laughs> you have you? You know what's wrong with them? They ain't never had rest. You have been around people all with you. Why don't you just sit down and rest? What the Lord said, all of you, if you come to me, I'll give you rest. You got decisions you need to make about moving, a new job, he'll give you rest. You got decisions about somebody getting your grandbabies four hours away, he'll give you that ain't funny, I know that. You'll get rich. You got decisions about been in a hospital four or five months in a row. You'll get your rich. Listen to this now. You got decisions about a wife who just told you she don't want to be your wife any longer, or a husband said he doesn't want to be your husband any longer, or a son that defies you, and doesn't want to listen to what you got to say. That doesn't negate. Jesus Christ saying, if you'll come to me, I'll give you rest. Anybody here today won't rest? Can't Can't buy it? Can't work it up? Can't get it from somebody else? Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. What an abundant supply. That's why he said all. He said, well, Brother Johnny, what does 500 people ask for? Getting 500 more, or 50,000, or seven and a half billion. He got enough for all of us. Amen. He said, if you come to me, I'll give you rest. Anybody want rest? Oh, thank you today. I'm asking anybody here for just a moment. Brother Randy and some of the others are going to be here. And Brother Ryan, y'all come and play real softly on some kind of music. I'm going to ask you to stand for just a moment if you will. And if y'all will, with the cowboy, let's put about four or five chairs up here in front. And here's what I want you to do for the invitation today.